This week, Garen and Ellie begin to plumb their new aquaponic system, Dad continues on the barn door for the pantry, and the family discovers London in the middle of the desert. We are working on the plumbing today and two other barrels that we need to paint as well. Should we go get the plumbing started, Azalea? I think the silence means yes. I'll plumb the grow beds so they'll have an inlet and an outlet. It's a dual loop system. So that means that the grow beds are on one pump loop of water and the fish tank and the duckweed pond are on another loop of water. It's a little bit more reliable to do it that way from what I hear. I got my first rain pipe. In the right spot and I got the exits all done just using little bulkhead fittings and then that goes down into the two inch pipe which is the drain pipe underneath and for the inlet pipe that's gonna be all one inch pipe these two will always be draining a little bit what's going in will be coming right back out and then this one will be filling and draining and then all three of these are gonna be filling and draining each tank is gonna have a valve on it so I can adjust the flow into the individual tank rather than trying to adjust the flow at like one point. There will be a, a main shut off to the whole system. Well, actually I might do individual sides just in case I wanna run one side or the other. I think what I'm gonna do is run a, a pipe right next to the drain pipe on the bottom. I'll go up and elbow into this one tank here and then I'll tee and then drop into each tank. Instead of using this fancy tee piece, we ended up just deciding that this looks so much nicer just to have the single pipe coming up and dumping in with the valve on the side. This is gonna look a lot cleaner with just the single piece. Right now I wanna measure for the door, so let's get our rough openings. We need to be... 78 on one side, 78 and a half on the other. So it's a bit of a slope. And then 39 and a half, 39 and 3 eighths. Okay. <laughs> so I want to be able to go outside of that dimension. And then, which gap do I want? Lots of measurements to think about, really. Yeah, yeah. Filled in or later. But she's gonna draw it on there. I did too much homework. Time. That's beautiful. That is absolutely beautiful. It's gorgeous. It's gonna work, baby. One of the stops on our trip was Lake Havasu. At Lake Havasu is really an interesting place because if you've ever been there before, you know they have the London Bridge. Visiting really piqued our interest into the history of the London Bridge. Mm -hmm. So we had to dive in. This is the London Bridge that's over the River Thames. Over in London. Before 1176, this is all wooden. And there's little scuffles and burnings and different things. You can um, imagine medieval times. Then between the year of 1176 and 1836, that's a huge span. They replaced that wooden bridge. They made it out of stone and this kind of stuff and made it strong. But of course, it still went through a lot of rebuilds and reconstructions. But what was interesting, that bridge was the most beautiful bridge in that it had buildings all over. It was a town almost on that it bridge. It looked like a medieval mesh up of all kinds of stuff. They weren't all one style. It was just, it was a conglomerate of all kinds of buildings. Yes, and so they, cool. It was, some would hang over like as much as seven feet. There was just tons of commerce going on. People living above, you know, like they would today, you'd mm -hmm. live above a store. They were doing that same thing. right now. above the bridge. It was like stone all the way, except in the center. It was wooden, and that's where that drawbridge would open and close. And then, of course, there was some, you know, medieval things. Bad guys, they would catch little heads on spikes mm -hmm. in the beginning. <laughs> Lots of traffic in that area, so you do this, you get this. <laughs> yeah. I just think that idea, this a town on a bridge, was just really cool, and I would like to see that be done That'd again. That'd be so cool. <laughs> yeah. Oh, you gotta come here, you gotta see this. I've been told that if you go into these, you come out as Superman. Batwoman. <laughs> Batwoman. <laughs> Wait a second. <laughs> Is it hot? What's going on in here, guys? Hot. Oh my goodness. Yeah, we're, get, we're, get, we're getting kind of 
We're getting close, charged up. What do you think, Chip? Is that fine? He's mm -hmm. less than fine. He's not worried, though. He's like, there. He's like OK. Oh, a little, now little water on the table. This is our inlet line, and then it'll connect to these guys. About like that. that looks pretty good. Nice. Sweet. It's looking mm. good. What's she doing now? Well, getting it plumbed down to the pump. All the water's gonna end up here and get pumped out of here. A little bit of twine right now, but I'll get that switched out for something nicer. We're gonna make brackets. Probably paint the pipe. Yeah. Clean it up a little once we're done. We got all the inlet lines finished for the grow bed. I just have to install the outlet side now, which is all this two inch pipe. Build one more of these long pieces and then plumb it to the sump tank. It's so much fun to have our own piece of land that we've bought and to dream up of different projects and improvements. I really enjoy the dreaming process particularly. That's half the fun right there. But then to actually have that dream and eventually pull the trigger, it's just a lot of fun to watch it come together. What the goal is for this property is to set it up to raise a family on. So things like having animals and just different things that they can learn and, and grow with as well like we did growing up we had great opportunities that way of being able to live out and animals to take care of and plants to take care of i didn't always enjoy it but looking back on it i really appreciate my parents for doing that yeah i wouldn't want it another way i always loved helping my dad with projects and stuff and i'm excited to have that for our kids too Got the boards cut now for the second door and they're all trimmed down to a flatter level taking that bevel off the edge of these, uh, these two bites. Right now I'm going ahead and glue the pieces together so that we can create the doors. Using these kinds of clamps does require an extra little piece I'm gonna do this time. I didn't have enough clamps to really do a whole bunch across there, but to keep the waviness down, I've got a couple other L brackets that I wanna put in there and see if I can't uh, keep that from doing any of the wavy things. And we're clamped and we're gonna go ahead and let this set for probably overnight and see what we'll get tomorrow morning. We are here in Havasu City and we are checking out their London Bridge. Believe it or not, it's not falling down. Every part of it, it was taken piece by piece, bit by bit from uh, London. So at some point it was falling down, but on purpose and reassembled right behind us here. Pretty exciting. We're gonna go check it out. Little known fact, the closer you get, the more of a British accent you get. So that's kind of a bonus. So let's go look, shall we? There was a guy by the name of John Rennie, and in 1831, he builds the new one. And that's the one we see at Lake Havasu. When he built it, you could imagine 1831, automobiles, right? Oh. Automobiles come out at the beginning of 1900s, right? right? So what's happening is over the years, it's kind of sinking a little bit, you know, an inch every eight years. Not, not bad. Not too bad. But now they got to replace it. Yeah. In 1968, Robert McCulloch, who is from America, what he wants to do is transform Lake Havasu. He decides he wants something that's going to attract people. He finds the London Bridge for sale, offers two and a half million dollars for it, and they take it. He was very much a visionary. Mm -hmm. And the people of Lake Havasu at the time, which was very low in population. I can imagine. They thought he was crazy. They're like, why are you bringing a bridge over from London? But he could see the future of the history of the bridge and mm -hmm. the people coming to see it. And not only that, it's a beautiful place. You can imagine it's off of a Colorado River mm -hmm. and you have the lake there. He's flying people in, casting his vision, and they're buying pieces of property. Property, believing in his vision as well. In England, when they're dismantling the bridge, they number every block, right? Yeah. You know how you get those kits, you know, where you build a boat or you build a car? This is probably the biggest case of one of those kits that I've ever seen in my life. They both had to disassemble it, number it all. Did they put it back piece by piece, every chunk? Well, it had to, it's amazing 
and then they ship it over. It goes through the Panama Canal, lands in California, and then they truck it over and they store it for a while. What's that pile of rubble? Oh, um, it's a bridge. <laughs> in 1971, it's constructed. When they put the bridge in, the water is not there. Why didn't the British person cross the road? I don't know why. Because we had their bridge. That's an awfully <laughs> big it. bridge. You must have a really big place where you can't get across. <laughs> thinking like both water. the rivers must have been the exact same size. About it. When they construct it, a lot of the inside is new construction. Structurally sound. Yeah, it's structurally sound. Everything was put in place and then they drudged like, I don't know, two million tons of dirt out of there and then put the little channel in there and then released the water to go in there. So Very cool. It was quite the feat. Everybody in the UK, we sure thank you for the bridge. I hope you don't miss it. hope you built another. It started raining pretty hard outside, so I thought I would come inside the shed here and build the stand pipes and the bell siphon. And the stand pipe is what sets the height of the water. Once the water gets up to a certain level, a siphon will start off of the bell siphon, and that'll suck the water all the way down to the bottom of the tank, and then it'll break the siphon and allow it to fill back up. I got all the stand pipes done and then all of the bell siphons done. Now the bell siphons only go with the four grow beds that are gonna have rock in them. These are gonna go with the raft beds. They just need a stand pipe and then they just have water constantly flowing through them. Gonna take these guys out and install them. Pretty straightforward, just thread these into the bulkhead fittings and then these just set right on top. So I was feeding the animals this morning and I came upon a super awesome, exciting uh, discovery. Oh, oh what baby. is going on? Oh, oh, she's having one too. Oh. Have another baby over here. Oh, he's adorable. Hi, little peanut. Oh, See, one of the sides of the milk sack is all shriveled in, so he's been eaten too, which is good. Cause that's the big, you know, when you have the babies, you wanna make sure they get attached within the first, you know, 12 to 24 hours would be kind of important, so. Oh, he's a big boy. Yeah, he is a big boy. And he's really, really pretty. He's got, it's just gorgeous too. He's oh, good. look at the little, uh, on his ears. Yeah, he's got little speckles. Oh, that's so oh, cute. Boy, huh? You're You're special, good, huh? Mama Bear. Yeah. Yeah, good, 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 Mama Bear. It's a great day to be alive, huh? She delivered it. She did, okay. Let's go see. Oh my, yes. She could have another one. Oh, wow. <laughs> you got two, baby. Yeah. Ah! Well, it looks like we're getting ready to put in the plan as to what we'd like to do for this door. Mm -hmm, so I'm for sure. Excited. I finally settled on what I want to do. I'm going to be creating an epoxy stained glass look. I'm going to draw it on my computer and then fill it all in and fill it all up. <laughs> fill it all in and fill it up. So you want to yeah. use epoxies? Yeah, I'll use epoxies. Right. We'll outline it in, I don't know, caulking of some kind. Okay. And then in each of the shapes that we've created for our stained glass, then we'll pour the epoxy. So you're building shapes. dams yeah. around your shapes, and then you're going to pour the shapes with colored epoxy. But the dams are, it's stained glass, so yeah. they'll stay there forever and ever. Not It'll real stained glass, though. No, but it's not lead. Epoxy. Like a look. It it that'd be a heavy door with lead. <laughs> so it's all going to be done in one pour. Gotcha. And then what's the thickness? You know, leave at least a yeah, minimum we'll a of an bit. inch. I'm thinking about halfway there. Halfway, or even a little less. three quarter. What we'll do is we'll fill up the rest of it with okay. clear over the top of okay. everything. Okay, all right. These are the pins of where they come from. 
visiting. Pretty cool. Yeah, breaks We've got ones from all over the world here. We got Canada, Ooh, Russia, Germany, France, UK over here. New Zealand. Only one. Americans, we don't have the rich history that is in England. I mean, there is no 1100 in America. I mean, there is, but it, you know, the native people of America and that history is lost for the most part. Uh, we don't have that like you get in England and other places. We don't even think about past too much when we go, but this is a great reminder to us that, you know, there's just a lot of rich history around the world. It gives us a chance to celebrate England, even when we're in the middle of desert. Wonderful window into history. London Bridge is falling down, Please don't falling fall down, down, down falling down. down, London Bridge is falling down. How's the rest of it going? My fair lady. Gold, so that's gold, what it is. Silver, silver gold and silver, gold and silver, London up with gold and silver, my fair lady. My fair lady. <laughs> Please don't fall while we're on it. You know, wasn't it the Let London Bridge is falling down and then you'd like do that as a kid and then you'd like capture somebody and then you'd be like, remember? Right? Yeah, then yeah. everyone falls down. Yeah, that's, yeah. No, that's no, no, wait, wait, wait. The Rosie. He's yeah. getting me all mixed up over there. Ring around the Rosie. Hey, I grew up in Clarkfield. You have to think what you can get. <laughs> We got these two 55 gallon drums that are going to be filters, so I'm going to paint them up the same color as the tank so it all looks nice and matches. I got the tanks all painted up and we're going to work next week on getting them set up out there and get the internal plumbing in them. They look good, huh? Azalea helped. Yeah? Did you do all the heavy lifting, Azalea? She looks pretty tuckered out now. Uh, she's growing up so fast too. Way quicker than I thought kids would. And like yeah. I realize that she's not really growing up yet. It's not <laughs> that long. Yeah. It's like already out of the newborn phase it seems like she's just getting so much stronger and I don't know, it's so fun to watch her grow. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Soon enough she's gonna be running around. Yeah, I can't wait to get to know her better. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I keep getting asked how my saxophone playing is going, and it's going. I don't know if you know this, but learning a saxophone is a little bit slow because you, you know, your muscles gotta build up. If you watch the video of us unwrapping our saxophones, this is a great deal smaller and less fancy than the one I opened up, which I am learning on that one too. I got this for my birthday. I'm having a lot of fun with it. We added a bunch of little fun toys, kind of little instruments on our Amazon list. So if you'd like to get one for me to try, I will play a little song for you if you get it for me. The t-shirt design of the week is the London Bridge. If you'd like to get this on a t-shirt, sweatshirt, all kinds of fun stuff over on our shop, as well as all the previous designs, we have a sale going on for free shipping from now all the way through Sunday. So if you'd like to take advantage of that and get yourself some spicy new merch, the link will be down in the description. Thank you so much for being a part of our family and we look forward to hanging out with you on Monday for our podcast. Bye. There's a rumor, and if you look at it from England's perspective, they're like, Robert McCulloch, oh, he thought he was buying the Tower Bridge, oh, yeah. And, yeah. And there's a rumor that he thought he had one bridge and he, and he got another one. And of course, if you go to the uh, visitor center there in yeah. Lake Havasu, they're sure to say that Robert McCulloch- Knew exactly uh, what he was buying. Yeah. <laughs> now, I mean, the logic of it is- He's not an idiot. No. He's, he's not a dum-dum. He's, he's, he's used to buying things. <laughs> and really, when it comes right down to it, which bridge would you rather have? Well, you'd want this one. Yeah. The History is amazing on this bridge. Mm -hmm. Now, Real. interesting enough, they do say that this bridge is haunted. Why is everything haunted? They're like, hmm, this <laughs> needs to be spiced up a little bit. Our family moved from the city to the country. Thanks for taking part in our adventure. We have new videos every Friday evening. If you would like to help us out, you can like this video, share it, subscribe, or support us on Patreon. See the links in the description. We have a few other belly... <laughs> <laughs> we have a, that was a barrel and Ellie. It was, it was a belly, you know? Anyway. Wait, is it super You want some dark green right? glasses? Quick intermission for note collecting. Note collecting. Note, note collecting. Please.
please note, mom is getting hers. Yeah. There's an and interesting wood. guy, Olaf, in the Norwegian. Ooh. Yeah, yeah. They say that's kind of what inspired the song London Bridges is Falling Down. But that Olaf. But it wasn't actually that song. It was a little bit different and then it changed into oh. London Bridge. The, so down. my only question is, did Olaf like warm hugs? Yeah, I don't know. I mean, that's I interesting. Know. And was he round and white and fluffy? I yeah, don't know. Yeah, that's, that's the true question. 